TikTok, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. I'm your friendly neighborhood philosopher, D. Wood, and with me now is the Christian Lioness of Speaker's Corner, Hatun Tosh. How you doing, Tatu? Hatun? I, I see you. Uh, I see you're out of jail. Uh, peace of Christ be with you, brother. Yes, I am out of jail, and freedom is good thing. Now, uh, so you actually went to jail because we saw you. We saw police haul, and we have the footage, so we can actually look at some of this. But we saw police haul you off. But sometimes, in order to, you know, calm the situation down, police will take a person out of the area and then you know take you around the corner to a coffee shop and say okay get out of here uh so, so they actually took you to jail uh i don't think i ever been to the coffee shop with the police they never take me to coffee shop yeah, really? um, yes they took me to the police station and i was there for 15 hours 15 hours that was uh that was 15 hours yeah that's that's a long 15 that's a long 15 hours um i mean we were only we were only in the dearborn jail for 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 a few hours when uh me and abil got arrested back in the day um although i have to say i could do 15 hours standing on my head after uh you know being locked up for a long time so what was what was uh what was your experience there and uh is this the <laughs> No, they, it was the first time. <laughs> the, no, I mean, like, like because they came after you before. Did they arrest you? I mean, did they actually take you to jail before? Or yeah. did, wow. Once, once I was, um, I was in cell for I think over twenty hours, and last time, last year back in May, I got arrested again. That time I was there like nearly twenty four hours. They had. They have to leave you. They have to let you go up after 24 hours because they have to have clear evidence to keep you there. Um, but in those times, it was it wasn't okay because like you've got limited freedom. But still, it was okay because you can ask for Bible and then you just read the Bible. You get to read like lots of. You've got lots of time. You read the lots of pages of the Bible. This time, um, they took my glasses, so I couldn't see anything. I couldn't read anything. Uh, and then they were asking me to like sign things and I'm saying like, I can't see anything. I need my glasses, but because I didn't have glasses, so I couldn't do much reading. I was just like trying to keep myself warm. Why would they, why in the name of common sense would they take your glasses? I don't know. Wow. Yeah. They took, uh, that wasn't the case last time, like last two occasions, but this time, they took my glasses and also I got like strip searched. So they just like in front of t three officers, um, they ask you to get naked mm -hmm. and then they take your clothes and then they give you uh, gray, I don't know what you call, like something look like trousers and gray t-shirts. So I got like free um, trousers and free shirt, but that's, that's um, good. It, it caused, um, humiliation so uh everyone everyone follow this um because we're, we're, we're going to get into the story but uh based on what i saw in the video um and again we'll take a look at this based on what i saw they came up to you someone came up to you snatched your quran and then police came up to you and arrested you after your quran was just strong-armed from you police yeah. arrested you but what you're telling us is they didn't just they didn't just make you leave or something like that they actually took you to jail uh strip searched you took your glasses so you you couldn't even see couldn't even read and then held you there for 15 hours because your stuff was stolen yep wow i was i was thinking i must be missing something there but uh yeah, there are small details but yeah overall kind of that was the Bigger yeah, I have to say, uh, I have a long history of being strip searched. Uh, yep, they, they did that. They did that all the time. And, and in fact, I don't know what they do over in the UK, but uh, here in the US, they uh, make you take all your clothes off. This is what they do with the guys. And, and then they tell you to lift up your sexual organs. And then they would make us squat and cough. And I guess the coughing is if they're if we're hiding something 
uh, in our butts or something like that, that coughing will make it fall out or something like that. I don't know what they're thinking or if it's just to, uh, to uh, mess with people. But uh, yeah, not it, it's, it's weird because if you've committed, if you know that you've committed a crime, this is the real issue. If you know you've committed a crime, it's kind of, okay, this is the result of what I've done, right? I, I get strip searched. I get that. I'm a, I, I've committed a crime. I am a criminal. And now they are strip searching me. If you haven't done anything wrong, if you haven't broken any law, that is seriously messed up. That is like insanely messed up. Uh, arresting someone, throwing someone in jail, strip searching them, uh, humiliating them, not for something that they've done, but for your own screw up. Like this is, this is police dropping the ball and messing up. That is, uh, that is extremely terrible. And you have people over here in the chat saying, uh, why are you not suing them? Well, um, sometimes things are not that simple from this part of the world. Yeah, because I mean, in, in the U in the U.S., we would sue the crap out of them um, and keep it. <laughs> and it's not it's not. You have the you have the lawyers who sue like police and stuff. And it was always in my head like I didn't like. I didn't like lawyers going around suing people, but they actually broke it down to me. They're like, if we do not sue the cops, the cops have no reason to not keep continue behaving like this, right? It's it's uh, mm -hmm. you, you you sue people in order to make them stop their their horrible horrible behavior. Um, and what what do you what do you think about the situation here? Because we we see them we see them do this over and over again. Um, nor, normally, what you would what you would want in a situation like this is. I mean, let's suppose someone ran up to police and said, oh, Hatoon, she's causing a problem. You would normally expect some sort of investigation, right? Like some sort of, oh, let's go over here. Oh, we see there's like a thousand cameras around before we arrest anybody. Let's go ahead and take a look at the footage because we don't want to arrest the wrong person. Well, um, so that happened in different forms. So I... I didn't even know why I was arrested until I was like shouting and screaming them in the van, uh, which I was told criminal damage. And I find out while I was at the police station, a um, couple of gentlemen from the speaker's corner turn up the police station because they had the evidence. Um, after that, uh, I was told I am not de-arrested for um, section 4a which is um you are causing stress to people by what you are saying or what you are wearing like it kind of goes under the god knows what but wait 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 wait, wait. well hold on one second one second it's a law that you can't cause stress to people by what you're saying and what you're wearing um well in in one sense so you've got law which says um what you are saying or Doing is causing stress or harassment to anyone. So apparently, certain people group are using that in a sense. Oh, what she's wearing is causing me stress. Um, oh my! It, it like at 4 a.m. in the morning, I was interviewed, and one of the question was in the forms of, "Oh, are you not aware that that might offend someone?" So this? that those kind of questions are coming from the police officers. I'm just like, well, if you are offending, don't come to speaker's corner. Is that a crime? It's offending someone is not a crime, but still you just like end up in a jail for 15 hours. Yeah, that sounds, uh, guys, I mean, no offense to the regular people of Great Britain who aren't in charge of the laws, but your, your lawmakers sound like idiots over there and your police sound like the biggest idiots in the world. And it, it, it reminds me, I mean, when we see something like this, when we see um, on camera, I mean, on video from multiple angles, we see you getting something stolen from you. And then we see police hauling you off to the cheers of the Muslim onlookers. Um, we look at that and, and it, it seems like police are, are doing the same thing that led to the massive success of their grooming gangs for decades, right? You got, you guys familiar with grooming gangs out there where, um, where in, in, a form, in a form, we are aware of it in a form that group of Asians did some crazy things and now it's coming out that police intentionally turn blind eye everyone intentionally turned blind eye and this group of asians are actually 
very big percentage of uh, from the Muslim community. So you, back then it was um, police, social workers, government officials, they were all informed repeatedly. They knew that thousands, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of young girls were being groomed, uh, raped, gang raped, pimped, drugged, all of that stuff um, by gangs of predominantly Pakistani men who viewed them as inferior because they weren't Muslims um, and were doing this to these girls and they got away with it for decades because police and officials and social workers didn't want to be called Islamophobes by pointing out what was happening. And so the, the idea there is, hey, we don't want to be called names, so let's just ignore the gang rape of thousands of girls so that we don't get called names. But it seems like the same, uh, very similar situation at Speaker's Corner. Hey, there's a bunch of people here, and if we start going after and arresting that guy for stealing something from Hatun, uh, the crowd here is going to call us, you know, names and Islamophobes and say that we're we're harassing them. It's much easier to go after the Christian woman, um, and then we'll be the heroes. And then they won't call us Islamophobes. We'll be the heroes of of Muslims everywhere. And um, they've been successful with that because this is third time my Quran is being stolen, and still nothing happened with the previous people who took my Quran without my permission, and they never returned it. Um, so like p certain people group know they can get away with that and in the past we have seen the examples when crowd simply says oh I'm offended what she says or oh, she's doing this or oh, she's wearing this then like you just grabbed from speaker's corner threat it if you go back we will ban you or well come to uh, spend some time in cell so it's like I think people group learn, certain people group learn that they can get away with this. And they are just like practicing more and more. So you're saying people at Speaker's Corner, basically no. they know they can walk up to you, grab your property, run off with it. They know they can uh, walk up to you, hit you, uh, stab you. They, they, they basically know they can get away with stuff. And so it's actually encouraging them to keep doing it because there's no there's no reason not to do it. Well, none of them has been questioned. Like, I, so my book has been stolen on Sunday. My camera is broken. I can't even, like, use what is in my SD card because SD card is damaged. Mic is damaged. It's it's not working. I had a foot on my hair while police is, like, dragging me out of speaker's corner. And none of those people, people been kind of asked, oh, why did you do that? Are you okay? Why did you take her thing? while I was at speaker's at, in cell for 15 hours without glasses. Um, Hatun, this is a little side note here. Um, I, I know, and Jay Smith know, we all know that we, we always try to give you money to support you, and you very frequently say, I don't want any of that, but you just, so, and, and you know, we kind of have to respect your wishes, but you just said you had some damaged property can at the at the by, hmm? by, by Mr. Muslims who think they rule the world, so they damaged it. They need to fix it. Um, but uh, let me say that uh, until they do that, in the meantime, can would you mind if D Wood and the people who love you here over on my channel would you mind if we at least got you some equipment to replace the equipment that you lost? Um, I think um, we are okay. I'll, I'll figure that out this week. You put together. Uh, you put together. It... You put together a list. You put together a list of everything you could possibly want, ladies and gentlemen. Are we going to cover my, uh, her, her my stuff? Conscience, my conscience is not very clear with these things because the resources Lord give to us, we are responsible to make good use of that, and we need to prayfully consider before where we give, why we give and what is that money is being used for. I'm very conscious about those things. Therefore, I think uh, we are all good. Okay. So you, you put together, you send me a list. You send me a list of everything you want and where it goes and you will get all that stuff. Um, people are, Let people are all in. What I, what I need. Lots of things now, David. You, 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 bigger you, and bigger. Facelifting, new nail polishes, 
Let's <laughs> think again. You put, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You put together. You put together a list. You put together a list, and uh, we we got you covered here. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and check out some of this. Uh, the video, darn, I should have put a link to the video. I'll add the link to the video. Uh, there are lots of videos because there are always multiple camera angles at Speaker's Corner. But uh, I downloaded the video from DCCI. Uh, so that's your site. And um, let's go ahead and check out a little bit of it. We can, ju we can jump around. Um, let's see. Pull this one up. I think this video is uh, put together Jai Apologetics and then he took it from Baska in the park because my camera is not working so it's someone else's video which we uploaded to the CCI. All right. So Jai Apologetics and he got it from Baska in the park. Yeah. I actually have this way turned down so you can talk but it actually happens right here at the beginning of the video, right? Yeah. I'm t at this stage, I'm asking them about... Let me get this over here. Oh, right there, it happened. So that was... Right... There, someone walked up to you and snatched... Your third Quran. That's what we have there? Yes. Uh, but that gentleman was in the crowd a little bit earlier, and he was just simply hanging around um, like you've got a video where you can see he's chatting to a person next to him to say that like I'm doing something and then that yeah. moment it's the Quran that's that's the guy as he's walking up to you right the one right behind your head in this video yeah. okay yeah, he was in the crowd yeah yeah and so he was uh so he snatches it and yeah right yeah you even see him move there and other so you're pointing out other camera angles have caught this guy's face yeah, so, so that's no, my camera just like destroyed in that moment that's when your camera's destroyed yeah so that's my camera man yeah keep, keep, keep in mind when we offer to get you new equipment you we don't need to just get you the same no. thing you can upgrade right you can no, up, it, you it, can, it, brother it's all good, it's all good so. <laughs> you can I, up I you can upgrade so even though this Quran, the Quran they took is gift from you, I usually have the principle to go behind my material, but uh, I didn't push because like he looked fit and he was like running. I'm not that fit. And then I noticed he goes the other side of the park. So at this stage, I'm just checking what is happening. And then you can see like people are following him. So they are all Muslims. Uh -huh. uh, if I go like, I won't be able to get anything. I might get hurt. So I just like making walking back. And I think that is the moment I'm just like, I'm going to bring the Quran and drill hole next week. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, l let me, uh, you just mentioned, this is the Quran I gave you. And I want to be clear. The Quran I gave you was to replace a Quran that was stolen from you, right? So I, I, I could be getting this wrong, but if I recall, Someone stole your Quran before, same thing, walked up, strong-armed it from you, took it from you. And then I said, well, I'll go ahead and make you a custom Quran and I'll send it to you. And then I sent it to you to replace one that was already stolen. So notice, I just want to point out to um, our Muslim friends who are watching, the Quran I sent you would have never been made. It would have never happened if they hadn't, stole, uh, if they hadn't stolen your Quran from you. In other words, they're, they're mad that you had a Quran right now and they walked up to you and they, I mean, they ran up to you and stole it right there in this video we just watched. But the only reason that Quran existed was because they stole your Quran before. So this Quran that they really don't like you having, you only, they on, you only had it because they took your other Quran. Is that, is that correct? Yep. And that previous Quran was done because they took the first Quran. So you keep getting these new Qurans that they absolutely have to have and they want to steal, but it's only because, it's only because they keep stealing your Qurans that this is even happening. Uh, I, I wanted, uh, we have the video from Omar here. We'll go back to the video where police are, uh, police are hauling you off. I wanted to pull up this video from Omar here because he actually has it afterwards. Now, now do you know this guy? Yeah, he's kind of regulated speakers going on. He was banned, I think he just back. So he was banned, and afterwards, this is the aftermath. 
Yeah. He's got the Quran. This is like approximately 10, 15 minutes after I left. I was um, <clears throat> arrested. So he uh, he he makes this he makes this video discussing the Quran. So he's got the Quran. Someone gave him the Quran, and he said that you know after this video he's going to go give it back to the person who gave it to him. And, and it's not he doesn't say I'm going to give it I'm going to give it to Hatun. It's her property. Uh, he's showing this now. Ju just uh, want everyone to understand the the idea of this because we understand we understand. Hey, you know this could be offensive to people. We understand that. We understand that there are reasons there are reasons for the stuff when when one group starts saying hey we're going to kill you if you hurt our feelings that you kind of have to hurt their feelings don't you in order to get them past that in order to get them to uh to understand that you don't get you're in a different country right now you're not in saudi arabia you don't, you're not in pakistan where you form a mob and murder people you're in a different place that has that, that has protections for criticism. If you don't understand that, then you got something like that. What, what are your views on all of this, uh, Hatun? I don't mean this specific incident. I mean the idea that you are, you're clearly saying some things that hurt people's feelings. Why do you hurt people's feelings about their profit and their book? Well, why their profit is hurting my feelings? Why their profit is hurting the feelings of Jesus? Why they are, it's not about the feelings. Um, why Muhammad hurt little children like that. you can go on and on Quran is hurting my feelings so uh, this is place called speaker's corner you go there to have the controversial conversations the things people don't want you to talk and the reason we've got the Quran with the holes in it because when the Sheikh expressed there are holes in the narrative after behind on the public uh, after like for um, years saying, oh, there is only one Quran. Now they are telling us, oh, there are holes in the narrative relationship between Ahruf and Krat. I turn up the speakers going to following Sunday, ask the same question to Muslims. And then week after that, I went back and then I this time I had a notebook. I asked them to write what they would write in this Musaf. All I got like they um, deep platform me. They said, oh, no, we are not going to talk to you. It is important topic foundations of um, Islamic faith is based on the authenticity of the Quran as well as Muhammad. So I, I don't want pe like because they take the they take they they took their original videos down. They gave me strikes after strikes and then they caused me to be homeless in that time. And I'm trying to have the conversation with them and they are blocking me. So they want conversation to die. But that conversation is causing people to give up Islam and turn to Lord Jesus Christ. So what, what is my next stop? I'll push one more. Let's talk about it. So uh, you put the holes in the Quran. Let's have the discussions and debates. Tell me why, what is this? Why I'm holding different Arabic Quran? So I don't see uh, anyone should be killed or should be hurt because they are questioning and they are putting the holes in the book. It's not my fault. Like, if you look at the Islamic tradition, Uthman ordered Quranic materials to be burned. A god comes and then eats the word of Allah. And Hajjaj pays people money to tear up the Quran. Some of the Qurans are being sunk in the Nile. It is Islamic to destroy the Quran. So why do they have a problem when I do it? Why do they think it is all right to take someone else's possession the object which is belong to someone else. For this one, I didn't pay for this one. You paid for this one. But for others, I gave my own money. I paid it. It is my possession. No one should be able to take my things without my permission. Because their feelings are hurt. So therefore, oh yeah, we can do whatever we want to do. Not acceptable. Maybe in Saudi Arabia, you can get away. Um, it seems they are pushing to get away in England, but it is wrong. And uh, so m multiple issues there. So, so my view as far as, uh, you know, why I mock Islam in certain situations and do things that they would regard as blasphemy or desecration is, uh, again, if, if you if you have a group and they're they're saying, hey, let's uh, anyone who does this, we're going to murder you and 
it seems like if you say, okay, well, I don't want to be murdered, therefore I'll, I'll, I'll obey you. I'll do whatever you say. To me, it's like you're, you're therefore encouraging violence. As soon as you say, hey, threaten me with violence and I'll do what you want, you've just encouraged violence. So you have to actually do the reverse. And what you're pointing out is that what you started with is this issue of consistency. Um, if you guys get to uh, insult our beliefs, um, if you get to insult and degrade Jesus and Christians and your book, uh, I mean, calls for the violent subjugation of Jews and Christians, calls Jews and Christians the worst of creatures, um, then obviously I have a right to to criticize your book and, and your position and, and you don't get to you don't get to to stop me, especially in the UK where you, you have no right to just walk up and, and steal someone's property from them. And yet they keep doing it. Um, let's talk about this particular Quran. So what, what's the idea with the Mickey Mouse? Um, Muhammad's supposed to be in the Bible. He's <laughs> not in the Bible. So they force Muhammad <laughs> in the wrong place um, that um, Ahmed won. So, and then this is, you kind of replaced it for my stolen Qurans because um, when Muslim says Allah Akbar, I s stated a couple of times Allah's mouse. It is the same idea, same kind of argument. If you are forcing Muhammad into the Quran, then um, you should be calling Allah as mouse because Akbar means mouse in Hebrew. Yeah. So guys, uh, f follow the follow the reasoning here. Um... Muslims say Muhammad is prophesied in the Bible. Um, hey, that's not nice. That that's offensive to us because according to the Bible, Muhammad's a false prophet. So it's it's offensive and hurting our feelings to say that he's a prophet according to the Bible. But when we ask them where, there's a word that pops up uh, repeatedly in the Bible, Mahmad, which is something you know lovely or something like that, something precious to you. And they have to ignore all the uses of this because it never makes sense to replace that with Muhammad. But in Song of Songs uh, 516, uh, it says, uh, it, it uses the word Mahmad. And Muslims say, ah, this is talking about Muhammad. It's a prophecy about Muhammad. And this, it's, what, it's what we call the phonic fallacy. These two words sound alike, and therefore they mean that they refer to the same thing. One of the stupidest, I mean, absolutely stupidest arguments anyone could ever offer for anything ever. And yet this is the position of, uh, I mean, you're talking Ahmed Didat, Zakir Naik, Shabir Ali, their guys all use this argument. Hey, the, the Hebrew word Mahmad, which is used in a bunch of places, um, it actually means Muhammad, even though it makes no sense uh, if you just insert the word Muhammad in all these places. And so to make fun of that, to make fun of that argument, you're saying, we say, well, if you're going to say, hey, Mahmud kind of sounds like Muhammad, so it means the same thing. Well, Akbar is mouse in Hebrew. So when Muslims say Allahu Akbar, it sounds like they're saying Allah is a mouse. And in order to make fun of that, we, uh, <laughs> we have a Mickey Mouse there. But then there are, the, then there are these random holes in the Quran. What's, what's the reason for the, the holes in the Quran here? Um, so for... A long time Muslims stated that there is only one perfect Quran and it turned up actually there are lots of different Arabic Qurans and um, when Sheikh Yasser Qadi was interviewed by part-time Stripa um, he was um, he stated that uh, like Muslim missionary was asked Muhammad Ijaf was asking okay like tell me about this like one Quran story and then Sheikh Yasir Qadi stated, well, everyone knows the um, story of Aruf and Krat. And then when we dig into it, there are 40 different opinions and there are holes in the narrative. So there, there are holes in the narrative and the holes in the Quran are representative of Sheikh Yasir, not our claim, Sheikh Yasir Qadi's claim that there are holes in the standard narrative. By the way, little side note here, you're the one who's as far as I know, you're the one who's mainly responsible for getting Yasser Qadi. I mean, a, you know, Muhammad Hijab, definitely a huge role. But the reason Muhammad Hijab had to push that issue and try to get Yasser Qadi to say something favorable when Yasser Qadi didn't, he, it just blew up in their faces, was because you were the one who kept showing up to Speaker's Corner with different Qurans from different parts of the world 
with different Arabic in it, and you kept having Muslims come up to you saying, perfect preservation right down to the letter, there's only one, and you would just put Qurans in their faces that have different Arabic from different parts of the world. And because of this, because this happened over and over and over again, and then all these confused Muslims are running to their apologists going, wait a minute, she's actually got these Qurans with different Arabic in it. I thought there's only one Quran. What's going on here? What's, what, what is this? And hijab doesn't really have an answer because at first he tried to explain it in terms of dialect and so on. Doesn't work. Total, total deception. And so eventually when hijab was out of, was out of, uh, ammunition to respond. He goes to Sheikh Yasser Qadi thinking Sheikh Yasser Qadi is going to clarify why there are so many different Qurans when there's supposedly only one. And Sheikh Yasser Qadi just basically said, eh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, I just wanted to express at this stage, uh, you just hurt my feelings for blaming me for the statements Yasser Qadi made. Well, uh, then police need to show up and arrest you for since you're the one who did the wrong thing, then you need to be arrested apparently in the UK because apparently in the UK, they arrest the victim every time. Yeah, it seems that way. It reminds me of, I mean, back when they're, back when they're starting to deal with the grooming gangs, finally, I mean, I know they're still going on and so on, but back when they're at least appearing to, I mean, you know, try to do something about this. Uh, I, I read about a man, a father whose daughter was being groomed and she's being kept in this house and pimped out. And he went over there and, and was trying to get his daughter back. Police came and arrested him. They came and arrested the guy for causing problems for the Muslims when he's trying to get his daughter out of the house where she's being, uh, you know, drugged and pimped out. Uh, very, very brilliant. I mean, gosh, we think of our police system as messed up over here in the, in the U S a lot of times, but, uh, you guys, uh, you guys take the cake. You guys take the cake over there. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, uh, Hatun, uh, so you had a Quran and you've got the, the Mickey Mouse one there. And, I, you know, I believe in second chances. So if anyone wants to return that Quran very quickly, I suggest doing it very quickly because, um, I mean, I've got all kinds of Qurans. Uh, so I got, I got, I got this unit. Hang on. Let me blow this up here. So I got, you know, I got this one. This one I, I, I use a lot in my videos and stuff. But notice we got the English and the Arabic. Got the English and the Arabic parallel. So this one's good for uh, this one's good for decorating. Um, if you want something nice and and sleek and so on, we've got Robert Spencer's the the critical Quran. This is very beautiful. Um, I could definitely customize it though to make it even more beautiful. We've got uh, we've got the study Quran here. So we've got the study Quran, very uh, very awesome Quran here. Uh, we have I think this is this is the one I use for that. This is the same one. I've got I've got a ton of these. Yusuf Ali's. I got a ton of these. So notice I can make one exactly the same. I can even get the holes in the exact same spot for the holes in the narrative. We've got, we've got, of course, you know, we've got, of course, these, but then, then I, I mean, I don't think you want to carry this one around because, uh, this is, uh, this one's bigger than you are, but, um, I've got that one with the holes here. You got this one? It's not that big though. Yours looks like size of manuscript. Yeah. This thing's giant. This I thing's giant. Carry. See, this is the one you want for when police take your glasses. Then you have this giant print here. Yeah, they take your book too. But uh, I can carry that, David. It's absolutely, I've got like a um, back witness on it's like. All right. So I, I just want to say uh, to those of you cheering on the theft of Hatun's property, um, Hatun, since you've had three Qurans stolen from you, I'm going to make you three custom Qurans. Count them. One, two, three. Because I can no longer, I can no longer just send you one, apparently, because then they'll just steal it. And then you might be without a Quran the next week. So I need to send you like three or five or something like that at a time so that when they steal one, you still got, you still got the, uh, the backups. Um, like, even though we are kind of making in a sense, serious fun of it. But um, it actually caused many people to leave Islam and many people to turn to Jesus because people are not aware of it. They, they are not aware that they've been lied. I had a person who came all the way from Malaysia to just ask why I have a Quran which has holes in it and no one, none of the Muslims are answering my questions. And he left Islam. So it is causing people to, it is getting people's attention, causing them to start thinking about Islam, doubting Islam and run away from Islam. And by God's grace, they are turning to Jesus. That's something uh, I'm grateful for.
So you're saying it's basically a, it's a, these are conversation starters that are making points. Hey, why, why do you have a Quran with holes in it? Well, this is to represent the holes in the narrative. I mean, by the way, just what a, what an amazing, what an amazing ideology where it's okay to lie. It's okay if all their guys lie to them for years telling them one Quran perfectly preserved from the time of Muhammad. It's okay to lie. In fact, they'll get mad at you if you don't lie to them, which you saw with Yasser Qadi. When Sheikh Yasser Qadi admitted, okay, we got some problems here. I mean, that was the start of the end of his career, apparently, because, uh, I mean, he was getting blasted. Um, but when we tell them the truth and have some conversation starters. Hey, there's holes in this Quran because there are holes in the narrative. Your guys admit that, that we're the bad guys and we have to be, uh, we have to be, uh, uh, arrested apparently in, uh, in your case. So very, very strange stuff, but yes, uh, any, uh, if you have any special requests on how to decorate these, uh, Hatun, and, uh, if you have any particular additions in mind that you'd like, uh, I, I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to come up with whatever you want. I even have some friends who are some who are who do graphic graphic design. So we could put some pictures on there. We could put Muhammad on the cover and so on. We can make a special uh, Charlie Hebdo edition of the Quran. We could do all of this. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, it's all thanks to you guys. It would not have happened. Though I'm talking about the guys who stole your who keep stealing your Qurans. This would not be happening if you guys did not take her Quran. It would not be happening. So don't come whining to me next week when I send a tune, multiple Qurans. Do not get mad at me. This is on, this is on you. Uh, anything you want to, uh, you want to um, add before we go back to this video and see what police did? Um, no, just um, in the, on the Quran, if, it, if you have the Muhammad's picture, I think we can hit the two birds in one go. I don't have to carry lots of pictures with me. All right. So... All right, so we'll get we'll get we'll definitely get you a Muhammad a Muhammad approved Quran with Muhammad's picture on the side of it. And that is good cuz on the one hand it's on the Quran, but on the set, on the other hand, you've got a picture of Muhammad. So that yeah, that is uh two birds with one stone. That is the Yeah, and then you point people to the one who has holes in his hand and holes in his feet. Mhm. Mm will work well. There we go. All right, so let's check out police here. Um it's towards the end when police. Oh, that's. I've already got you there. Okay, here we have police talking. So what what's what's going on at this point? So what what did you think when police were coming up to you? Um, so when my book is being stolen, in the past it has been stolen, and then when I reported that, the officer said, well, we can't do anything, it's too late now, even if it was only an hour or something in the past. Um, when the book is gone, I asked a brother to just call and then report that. So I just thought, oh, they are so quick, they just turned up. In my mind, like, they came, so like, uh, to say okay what happened or who stole your book or something so just just to clarify someone stole your book and your property's damaged someone runs to police so you assume police are coming to you know get to the bottom of this yeah wow and then police officer said we need to talk i said sure i was just like getting there at that at that stage i'm just trying to fix the camera i was getting another um, brother Baska in the park to kind of help me to uh, speak with the police. Sometimes the things can be easily misrepresented. And then when I notice Muslims are like start cheering, I'm just like, oh no, officer, if you've got anything to tell me, tell me here. And then suddenly they said, you are under arrest. I said, what did I do? And then it just happened so quickly. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and check some of this out. Now, Hatun, you seem to have a little gangster in you because uh what? huh no i mean that in a, i mean that in a good sense where they they uh because keep in mind so you have two positions if police are unlawfully arresting somebody right you, you got two positions if police are unlawfully arresting someone they're arresting someone without an investigation without that person doing anything you have two views one is to just go along with it do whatever the police say and so on and then you have another position, which is that, no, they're actually violating your rights. They're assaulting you. They're, 
they're in the wrong. And so you don't, you don't have to, to go along with it. I'm saying that because uh, you, uh, <laughs> you don't go quietly here. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and see this. I can actually turn this up. What's that? One of the things I cannot stand is like physical touch. I can't, oh. like, I, I get, like, when someone touches my arm or those things, I get, like, so stressed. And then that's, like, this is just, like, so, even, like, someone else who is not your father or your brother, stranger is touching you. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you can, you can imagine, you can imagine if police were arresting a Muslim woman and they put their hands on a Muslim woman. You can imagine the different reaction. I mean, if they had walked up to someone in a hijab and just grabbed her and started dragging her away and start using, uh, you know, arm holds on her and stuff like that, how differently this crowd would be reacting here. But it's a, it's a Christian woman, and so they're cool with it. And they love it, and police are now their heroes. Yeah, at this stage, they are putting hand... Um, what is that? Hand... Um, they're tidying up my hands. And the way, like, they talk, like, my arm is, like, so uncomfortable at that stage. Oh, of like, course, I, I can tell. It's Yeah, it's supposed to be. I can tell. It's just, like... Doesn't look good at all. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is how the UK police treat a woman who was just robbed of her property. I like the camera angle here. <laughs> and I saw a, uh, I saw a different angle of this. Um, the first one I watched was on a Muslim camera, one of those uh, Muslims who was recording closer to you. But yeah, someone people something on my right head. there. That's the part I saw. I saw yeah. I saw a close up video earlier where someone hit you in the head with something. Right. Yeah, it's, um, foot or something. I hit um, foot stuff on my head. Yeah. And so this is supposedly, ladies and gentlemen, this is supposedly the heart of free speech in the world. Speaker's Corner, London. And it's just, uh, it's interesting how the Dawagandists gravitate to this spot. Like this is the one, like this is the spot in the UK that is supposed to be most free speech. And it's, the idea seems to be if we can control that area and gain control of police and everything else in that area, I don't know. It's like they think they've won. You can see the things on my hair, like foot. Um, oh, yeah. The stuff they threw at you or hit you in the head with. Yeah. There's a cop coming over. I'm just trying to figure out why they arrested me at this stage. Still, I didn't know like why I had been arrested. Man, what a country. You know, guys, when I see stuff like that, I'm glad we dumped your tea into our harbors. Glad we dumped your tea into our harbor. Uh, all right. So then they arrested you. Um, so they arrested you for, for criminal damage, criminal First. damage. Yeah. To my property. They arrested you for criminal damage to your property. Yeah. 
that wow. book was belonged to me, even though it was gift from you, but it was like belonged to me. So I was arrested for criminal damage and then de arrested for se um, section 4A and 4 a.m. in the morning for section 4A and 18. And then I was released without charges. And wait a minute, wait a minute. So they arrested you for things and then <laughs> keep you locked up for 15, 15 hours and then they just release you. Oops, sorry, you didn't actually do anything. We're not charging you. Yeah. And when they released me, they didn't even give me place to get changed. I had to ask officer if I can put my underwear before I leave the station. Because they took all your clothes. So you are just like wearing their gray trousers. I, it just... Did you get to keep the gray trousers? I did actually. I, I had, okay, I had two trousers. One of my trousers they took from me when I got stopped. I'm still waiting that to be returned. I had only one trousers. Now I've got like gray trousers too. So, well, that's cool because I still have my uh, I still have my prison because they 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 release you in your prison in your prison uh in your prison outfit. Even get, they even give me shoes. Oh, this is awesome. We should uh we should do a, we should do a picture. We, we should do a live stream one night where we're uh, where we're <laughs> we're wearing our our incarceration yeah. gear. Yeah. Not, not funny, actually, like, um, very humiliating and intention is just wrong. And especially, oh, it's all about protecting the group, uh, which dam causing damage to humanity. And, uh, and I just wanted, I just wanted to repeat this for anyone who wasn't there earlier. There, there is a world of difference between being locked up, being arrested, being locked up, uh, being handcuffed, being searched, being strip searched, being put in a cell. There's a world of difference between doing that if you've actually done something and if you know you haven't done anything. Uh, because keep in mind, in, in, in Dearborn, Michigan, they locked us up, threw us in jail, kept us there for a while, and we hadn't done anything. And the things they accused us of, we didn't do at all, right? Um, no investigation. They just took us and locked us up. Uh, and then they were wrong. Then they And then so... Uh, then we were found not guilty and then we sued them and uh, they had to apologize and they had to post an apology on their city's website for three years. Um, but a world of difference um, between, okay, I fought the law and the law won, I did something wrong and I'm locked up for it versus the government just, the government, which is supposed to protect me, just violated my rights, threw me in jail in order to appease some people who don't like me. Um, this is this is another version of what, what's called the heckler's veto, where hecklers get to decide, in this case, you know, people strong arming you or something like that. But the idea is that the listeners get to decide what you're allowed to say, because they will ultimately control the police who will listen to the hecklers, or in this case, the uh, robbers and so on. And uh, it's a, it's, it's just horrifying for those of you who've never experienced, it's horrifying because you think, okay, if something goes horribly wrong, I can call the police and the police will come in and they'll protect people who need to be protected. When police then come in, when you, you call police and police come in and they go after the victim, that's just a, that's a, it's a horrible feeling for a lot of people because wait, who do I call then? If I'm in, if, if I'm being attacked, who do I call? Because police are on their side. If you can't even trust the police. That's very serious, actually. Like you can't. Like I know that my address is out there, or like when I went to police officers to kind of express concern on certain things, police officers simply told me, "Oh, I hope you had a good reason to convert to his Christianity." And once police officer told me, "Well, you are putting our life in danger. It just you don't have anywhere else to go." You have to go to them, but you can't go to them. So you just like learn to deal your things by yourself. Yeah. So, uh, la ladies and gentlemen, if you if you, I, I understand that there are people who come here and go, oh my goodness, you guys are making fun of Muhammad. You're uh, you're making pictures of Muhammad, and that's so offensive to them. Or you're you know you you've got you're making custom Qurans, and that's so offensive to them. Ladies and gentlemen, we're we are doing everything we can to avoid the situation that is being produced, where in Muslim countries you have Sharia, and then in Western countries where you supposedly don't have Sharia, you get 
this sort of replacement Sharia, right? Where, sorry, you can't make fun of Muhammad. Sorry, you can't because um, police will come in there and stop you based on other people complaining. Yeah, two years ago, um, a teacher who in the lesson showed the picture of um, caricatures of Charlie Hebdo, he's still hiding. Um, another t- a teacher who had a mug with the picture of Muhammad and Jesus, he is being suspended from his job. And movies are being banned, with, that's within Islam circle, but there is, if you don't, if you kind of become dim before them, everyone else is becoming dim before them. So some, some, some people need to say no, because as a Christian, we are set free by blood of Lord Jesus Christ, and no one should take the basic freedoms are given to us because their feelings are being hurt. It's just like wrong in every level. And uh, going back to the point you made earlier about consistency, it would be one thing. It would be one thing if, if like the religion was like the nicest, friendliest religion in the world and only spoke highly of everyone else's religious beliefs and said, all beliefs are fine with us. And that's all, that's all great. And we don't want to hurt anyone and we don't want to subjugate the world at all. And everyone's, everyone's great. That would be one thing if people were making fun of that, but it's, Hey, here's our religion. It calls for your violent subjugation. Uh, it, it calls for us to ultimately control you, to bring you, to subjugate you and force you to pay us money so that we don't kill you. It defines you as the worst of creatures. And in a situation where it's a war, we can uh, take you, kill the men, uh, grab the women, grab the daughters, use them as sex slaves. We can do all that. And by the way, you're not allowed to say anything back. I look at that and say, what do you mean I can't say anything about it? You just said all this stuff about us. You say all this stuff about our religion. You say all this stuff about what you can do to us and what you're ultimately going to do to us. And we have to keep our mouths shut in return. And if you say, if you're one of the few who actually says, no, actually, uh, to be fair here, since you're saying this, I'm going to criticize and even mock that ideology that calls me all of these things. Uh, as soon as you do that, now you've got police jumping in and saying, well, we're going to arrest you for speaking back to these guys. It's like they're... <laughs> It's like in the Islamic mindset, Islam is supposed to be in charge of everyone else, the government, everything else. And you come to the West and it's supposed to be against that. No, you don't control us. You don't control what we get to say. And yet the government just goes along with it anyway. Therefore, we need um, people to say no. Uh, I do understand sometimes it is difficult, especially if you've got like family responsibilities, all those kind of things. But if you don't say no, you just lose it. it like, we, everyone was saying we are all Charlie Hebdo and those killings took place. Now, even like having his picture, pictures of caricatures is causing someone to be arrested. Yep, and uh, you, my goodness, you wonder, you wonder what it takes. I mean, you just wonder what it takes for people to catch on that. I mean, just imagine a different scenario, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine, imagine when Hatun showed up with a custom Quran and someone stole it. Imagine a thousand people then show up the next week with custom Qurans. Imagine a scenario like that. That would send a message. That would send a message uh, to Muslims of the world. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. If someone drew Muhammad and that person gets killed and then tens of thousands of more people drew Muhammad, even people who don't who don't like the idea of drawing Muhammad. But in order to get past this moment in history where people from, you know, Saudi Arabia and Pakistan think they get to control what we do in the United States and Great Britain and so on. If in order to get past that, people said, all right, well, we're all going to draw Muhammad until you guys get it through your heads that we can draw Muhammad. And then once once you stop trying to control us, then, you know, probably won't be probably won't be doing that anymore. Um, imagine that versus. Well, we're going to arrest you if you criticize Muhammad, we're going to arrest you if you offend people that just encourages them, right? Every Everyone there is encouraged. Wow, police just did what we wanted them to do. 
all because we stole her Quran. What does that encourage them to do? It encourages them, it encourages them to assault her more, to steal more things from her because she's the one who gets in trouble for it because of because of these cowards. Yep. Very, very strange. So, uh, Hatun, I will be making you some uh, some custom Qurans. Uh, I have limitless, I have limitless Qurans. I got all the Qurans in the world. They're all over. Uh, they're all over the place around here. Um, I, I keep I keep a supply of Qurans just in case of emergency, so I don't have to wait to order to order more. Um, uh, I actually I actually had a live stream last night with. Uh, with reasoned answers and uh i don't know if you know but i've been oh yeah you do know because you messaged me um i'm i was deleting my channel on july 4th deleting my channel on july 4th because uh there's some other ways that i'd like to go about things that i think will be more effective and then a bunch of people started offering to buy my channel. Not all the videos are saying delete it. It's basically uh, since you've got, you know, since I've got 700,000 subscribers, they just want uh, to take over the channel and then appeal to those subscribers. And so anyway, people were offering me piles of money to take over my channel. And I was like, no, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to delete it. But I have to say, when... <laughs> When police uh, came and locked you locked you up over that, uh, my first thought was, okay, I'll make her another Quran. Then it was, oh, I'll make her a couple Qurans. But then it was, hey, actually, Hatun, if she wants my channel, if she wants my channel instead of me deleting it, she can actually have it. So I could give you 700,000 subscribers if you want but i know you already have an effective channel you already have you already have 50,000 you you've been growing for a for a while so just wanted to put these options here for you if you want my channel um to take it over you can have it if you want um uh, but i've talked to reason answers last night and i told him if if uh because he wants it he wants it and uh he wants to, he wanted to buy it he's offering he's making bids and they're saying i said okay you don't need to be putting in bids take your first offer even though you've already been massively outbid by people like bob the builder and so on uh i said but if he if he uses it as like a super group where you know you and bob and him and some others can all uh post and uh keep sending out content to those subscribers just wanted to put that out there for you um again you've already you've already got a channel but <laughs> These are just, these are just the thoughts. So if you wanted it, you can have it. If not, uh, reason answers looks like uh, we'll have a spot for everyone where everyone can post uh, their so content. If, if I if I if I say yes, I love to have it, then all other Christian apologists are gonna be my enemies. What? That's just, and it's gonna boil the blood of Muslims. That's something I would love to see i don't want to be mean but like it wouldn't be tears of jihadists it would be like their blood is like boiling they would hate it yeah i know if if uh if they steal your book and then they think they won and then you get a uh, an extra six hundred and fifty thousand subscribers um so anyway you can uh you can let me know uh you can let me know what you want to do again the, the 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 original plan was to delete my channel i'm leaving my channel one way or another i'm getting off my channel um the options were because the first person that made me think about not deleting it uh, was, I mean, was that situation there. That's when I was thinking, ah, oh, I should just give her the, I should just give her my channel and that will enrage these people and make them, make them realize they, they, uh, you know, they can't win that way. So uh, one option one, you can have that channel. You can, uh, I will just transfer ownership of the channel over to you. I am deleting a ton of the content there because the content would ultimately get you in trouble, but you'd still, I would, uh, you, you, you would still have, uh, the channel, uh, the subscribers and so on. Um, or, or I can give it to reason answers and he will use it as a super group where a bunch of Christian apologists, uh, who deal with Islam can post, uh, totally up to you you do have a lot of fans over here saying do it do it do it do it do it <laughs> um um i'll make a comment on that maybe after the live stream um i just wanted to say i was recently in somalia mm -hmm. and it's like very poor country yet people follow your channel a couple of years ago i was in saudi where some of the pure Christians never seen Bible in their life. 
Like they never hold physical Bible in their life. There was a lady, she memorized John Gospel just listening online. Even she knew your channel. So um, thank you very much for serving um, our crucified and risen Lord. Um, like many different parts of the world, you touched, uh, Lord used you to touch the many lives with your channel. So um, I just wanted to say thank you for that. Oh yeah, no problem. And uh, we, keep in mind, we're all looking. We're we're all over here in the in the U.S. and we're looking at you in Speaker's Corner um, with a, a crowd standing in the middle of a crowd of people who want to take your head off, and then police who want to uh, lock you up, uh, and seeing you seeing you stand your ground, and that is a a good kick in the pants to a lot of no, Christians. Right. Um, God doesn't need us. When it is time to go home, we will go home. When it is time to move to a different platform, we will move. At the end, we've got God who is in charge of all. And uh, freedom, Lord Jesus Christ, give it to me. I can't just let that to be taken by Mr. Policeman or Mr. Muslims. Mm -hmm. Not acceptable. And... Uh... Ladies and gentlemen, for some reason, people think, no, we need David. David's gone or something like that. No, guys, as far as I'm concerned, we're just getting started here. This is the beginning. This is not the end. This is the beginning. We're, uh... <laughs> we're just getting warmed up here. These are going to be some awesome times. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I said it once. I said it before. If you want to reach Muslims with the gospel, if you want to, um, if you want to undermine and refute the most obvious false prophet in history who's who's more who's responsible for misleading and deceiving more people than anyone else in history this is the best time ever to do it we have opportunities now to reach muslims around the world and the reason the reason there is such fear that they would that so many people would have to target uh someone like hatoon like obsessed with targeting her and harassing her and so on uh the reason is because they are scared they know they are they're understanding the times that they're living in they know that there's an avalanche of apostasy all around them right now they're absolutely terrified and well uh there's a reason for that and so if, if that's if this is the result when we're just getting started my goodness i'm looking forward to the next five years the next 10 years this is going to be awesome 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 times and a lot of that is thank to thanks to the work of our sister hatoon and uh all the other uh, christians over there at speaker's corner and uh, everyone who's uh, doing youtube apologetics right now we just talked about a lot of the people um last night so uh definitely looking forward to what you've got in store for us in the future hatoon and uh, everyone if you're not following uh, whatever she decides about uh <laughs> about my channel um if you're if you're everyone go follow DCCI right now if you're not already following DCCI uh, that's that's a uh, Hatoon's ministry over there at Speaker's Corner and so be sure to uh, to check that out and subscribe and um, once Hatoon sends us a list of anything we need I uh, hope everyone is going to uh, join me in uh, getting her any <laughs> replacement equipment I, will, I won't be sending you the list but thank you um, yeah, but we're going to need that list or I'm just going to send you a random pile of a uh, pile of equipment because the, the idea is the idea is if uh, if if people have been encouraged by police to destroy your stuff and take your stuff, you're going to need a steady supply of new stuff. And uh, it'd just be cool if every time they messed with your stuff, you showed up with even better stuff. Right. It would send a message. It's the only way to, you got to send the message one way or another. So. Uh, so we'll take thank care you. of that. All right. Well, thank you. Hudson. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And uh Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to be sure to uh, share what happened to Hatoon because people need to get it through their heads of what's going on right there in the UK, especially at Speaker's Corner. And people need to uh, p police need to be shamed into doing the right thing if they're not going to do the right thing willingly. Uh, same thing with the grooming gangs. They they were they would not do anything until they were absolutely shamed and humiliated into starting to do something. So. Um, yeah, just, just just have to remind them of what they did until they start doing the right thing and start doing their jobs. All right, thanks, Hatoon, and catch y'all later. Thank you very much.